G'day everyone, I'm Tim. I'm here today to make this short video to show you my garden, more specifically my aquaponics setup. This is a special request from my friends from the Facebook group Kampong Gardening. Um, it's just a group of fantastic garden lovers from Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, the UK, the US, pretty much the world. So this all started because I posted a photo showcasing some of the seeds that we've germinated for this spring summer season and they were so impressed by it and they just wanted to see more of the aquaponic system or you wanted to see more of the aquaponic system so I thought um, in golden hour here the light is just perfect I'm gonna show you what the aquaponic system looks like um, okay as you can see it has changed a bit since the last time you saw it bit of painting and we've got these gorgeous cucumbers just so many flowers Growing really well. This here, if anyone's interested, is um, dragon fruit. I think this is the the orange or the, the pink, the red dragon fruit. We've got lettuce. And as you can see, we've got a lot of lettuce. They're doing really, really well. Lettuce loves aquaponics. We've also got tatsoi. Um, I really need to harvest and eat them, sorry. I live um, near an airport, so literally every 30 seconds there's a plane, um, usually a little Cessna because there's um, a training school. Um, they're flying around, they're just doing their circuits, but as you can see some of them have already gone, started to flower, so I, I just pull that off because there's no need for it. Okay. okay. Okay, so we've got two systems. We've got, I call this section here IBC1 because this was built first. And this is IBC2 because this was built second. They're, they're really more twins because they're built at the same time, but, but this one went in first. But basically, aquaponics, how it works is you have an aquarium or an enclosure that contains fish the fish creates waste fecal matter um, a pump draws the waste through a series of grow beds and filtration systems that physically removes the the, the sediment the fecal matter bacteria within the grow bed then converts the ammonia into nitrite then another type of bacteria converts the nitrite into nitrate and that becomes um, a food source for most of the plants. The grow bed we use, as you can see, the, the material we use in the grow bed are these volcanic rocks. Actually, it's I need to do a bit of maintenance. There's a lot of dead material, but yeah. So that's just a porous. We don't use soil. We use these clay balls. Um, you could actually substitute the clay balls with volcanic rock, any substrate that can maintain bacteria colonies. So let me show you. It's not going to look really good, it'll be quite dark. But down here we have a combination of goldfish, um, mainly shubukans, and silver perch. I've got one big ass massive shibukan in here somewhere, but he's hiding. We used to call him Fatty. I think he's hiding right at the very back. You can probably, all the fish that you see swimming nearby are the silver perch. Yeah, oh, come on Fatty, Fatty. No, can't see Fatty. Yeah, so. Um, silver perch are incredibly easy fish to raise. Um, here in Victoria it gets cold in winter and really hot in summer. So there aren't many fish that can survive such vast temperature changes. The silver perch does really really well because they, they mainly grow. You have the massive burst in, in growth um, through the spring and summer months and then in, through autumn and winter they they don't hibernate, but their, their consumption reduces 
fecal production also reduces which means that less waste is produced which means that there's less nutrients for plants um, but what you'll find is that you can easily double or triple the size of oh, sorry river I'm trying to talk to our friends on I, okay oh yes okay river that okay thank you thank you Sorry about that for a little, little interlude. But anyway, so what we have is, as you can see down there, there's a massive, um, there's a massive pump down there. It forces water through this external filter here, this external canister here, um, where it filters out the physical sediments, the leaves, detritus, anything that's physically, it gets caught in there. And then the rest of the water is pumped through. We've got, as you can see, one pipe goes all the way back there and it fills this pipe up with water. So let me show you. You can see this water there. You can see the roots. So as you can see, there are two types there. The, we've actually got two types of setup here. We've got the plants growing in, and just we have the plants in these little baskets and it just sits in the water. And the plant just filters. There's bacteria in these clay balls that, that converts ammonia to nitrate to nitrate. And the plants then consume and it filters the water as it goes through the water then continues down this path comes into here and what you'll see here is it's water so as you can see I'm going to lift this raft up you see look at that beautiful strong roots we have a combination of tatsoi cos lettuce and my favorite brassica kale um look at that the reason we have kale and the reason i have kale is i call them my sacrificial vegetable um, we have huge huge problems of cabbage moths and because aquaponic systems are very very fragile the second a single drop of pesticide is introduced to this area it kills the bacteria and aquaponics desperately lives and survives off the strength of your bacteria colonies um, so we don't use any form of pesticides on this property at all so what we have to do is find clever ways to distract or confuse um, um, pests and in the case of cabbage moths we use sacrificial vegetables and brassicas are cabbage moths favorite vegetables to lay the eggs and for the caterpillars to feast on what i do as you can see something has been munching away on this kale there's one oh look at that there's a caterpillar here's a caterpillar here's the beauty of this so oh really hard I love to eat kale kale is one of my top 50 vegetables um, but I'm using in this case to sacrifice to the cabbage moths and for the caterpillars we let the caterpillars feast on the brassicas and then I catch the caterpillars and feed them to the silver perch oh here we go and the fish will then go and eat that tasty morsel of protein it's the circle of life okay <laughs> so okay the water then goes in here it then gravity feeds down to this bed here which is filled with taro as you can see the taro is freaking taking over the water then those oh sorry once again gravity feeds back down into this grow bed here and in this grow bed we have a combination of tomatoes which needs tying up and go to cola um, or arthritis herb 
it's actually delicious in a salad. And then water, um, we've got a bell siphon here, it's about to fill up. Once it reaches a point, it auto fills. It's similar to, to here. Oh wow, look at this. I think you all, if you have been a long time YouTube follower of ours, you would have seen that I've harvested a lot of galangal and Vietnamese mint from here. Because as you can see, the galangal has freaking taken over this plot here, as has this Vietnamese mint. <sighs> Okay, um, this IBC, as you can see, is thriving, it's flourishing, and it's producing a lot of really delicious greens for us. This IBC here needs a lot of maintenance. There's a leak somewhere. Um, I need to work out exactly where the leak is. Um, and once that's fixed, we're gonna do all that up, fill that up with vegetables, Ow. Fill this up with vegetables and get production pumping. What I'm also going to do, as you can see here, we've got this UV netting. Um, over this summer, I'm going to be replacing that with clear laser light or clear plastic roofing. Um, that's going to increase the light in here um, because, as you can see here, it's quite dark. Also, a lot of the leaves have collected at various points and it's just making the spot darker um, and it's going to turn this almost into a semi greenhouse um, over winter which hopefully means that it, it's going to turn this into a semi kind of open greenhouse which will hopefully mean that more heat is trapped in there or more UV um, will heat, hit the plants and hopefully they'll produce over winter which is quite terrible at times but I also want to show what we have here, um, we're, we're trying to protect it because this black and white devil here. Hey, hey, hey. We've got. No! I'm pointing for the people watching, not for you to attack me. Okay, so all these. Ah, all these here are four angle beans. Seriously, one of my favorite vegetables of all time. River Song! River! River. Enough. Enough. Okay, as you can see here, four angle beans are starting to flower. Hey, enough. Okay, that um, is a snake beans. This used to be an old Avery. It's now been converted into a greenhouse. This is the pride of the season. This is the infamous blue pea flower. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? It's doing so well in here. And we've got a second one. What we're doing here is we're, wait, uh, we're trying to germinate Manuka tea tree, um, which is the plants that produce Manuka honey. Here in Dingley, which is where I live here in Victoria, we have quite a few apiarists so um, I like to to give all our local bees access to delicious beautiful tasty flowers so hopefully they germinate soon we understand it can take three to six months to germinate manuka tea tree we've got pawpaw or papaya germinating here quite nicely more tatsois now all these are Rokoto chilies. Now, Rokoto chili is one of my favorite chilies, only in the respect that there's mild spice levels. It's not the spiciest chili you can get, but there's a nice bite to it. It's incredibly flavorful. It's sweet, it's tangy. There's a quite a unique flavor to it. The seeds are black, so it's quite fancy when you're making chili sauce and you get these black specks. But more importantly, Rokoto is one of the few chili plants that will survive Melbourne's winter. Um, all of these seeds are the byproduct of a parent plant. Um, these are all seeds we collected from last season's harvest. And as you can see, every single one of them has come up so strongly. More lettuce, more pawpaws, more Rokotos, Rokotos, Serranos. Yeah, 
um, and more four angle beans. A lot of these are due to be transplanted to, um, to aquaponics very soon. So that's kind of it really. That's my garden, uh, my aquaponics. Very simple system, just done on a, you know, like a, a backyard scale. I know speaking to some of you, you're a little concerned about it being too DIY or you worried about screwing it up. But here's the truth. I started this purely through reading a few articles online. I had no idea, I don't know anyone or didn't know anyone into aquaponics or set up their own aquaponics system. So all of this was off my own back and my own research. And I didn't jump straight into building these systems. What I first started doing was I bought this small um, in the house aquarium aquaponics setup, which is a plastic tank that you can put like a Siamese fighting fish. And then there's like, six white pots with grow material and then you can plant things in there and you have like a goldfish or something and you just have it indoors it's got this tiny little pump and that's how i started i started with some danios and um yeah siamese fighting fish sitting on top of a lizard cage inside and i didn't have plants i use avocados so there's this big trend years and years ago where you get your avocados and you put it like with toothpick and put it in water and just wait for it to to germinate well that's what started for me and these two are the original avocado seeds i used to spark my interest in aquaponics so you know take baby steps don't leap into something like this start small you could start with a small tank or a small tub which has fish get yourself a small pump pump that water up to a grow bed at the top and allow it to gravity feed through back down into your tank highly encourage you all to give it a shot it is fun it is simple yes there is a bit of effort at the start and there if you're building a relatively decent size system like this yes there is going to be a significant capital outlay and effort but at the end it's going to pay off as you can see here through spring summer and autumn i don't need to buy any lettuce i don't need to buy any greens because i produce more than i need this small setup here i either give to my family to mum who who lives less than five minutes walk away give to my sister or to my brother um or heck we just freaking just feed it to the fish talk about closed loop system you're producing so much you're actually feeding what you produce back to the fish closed system full circle of life give it a try thank you all so much um if you want to see more of the garden if you actually want to see me build an aquaponics from the ground up so a small compact say patio size one yeah maybe message me and let me know if you want to see that anyway see you next time hooray